Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to do something really basic and really straightforward we're going to play with an oscilloscope and a signal generator and what I'm going to try and do is answer a few um, comments and questions that have appeared on, on several of the, of the recent videos and hopefully it'll be useful um, if you've got lots of practice playing with signal generators and oscilloscopes this video probably isn't for you if you're new to it uh, there might be some handy information here I'm acutely aware that as human beings we learn uh, often through um, visual examples and hopefully there's going to be uh, some uh, nice little explanations around those visual examples on this video so without further ado let's go to the bench okay so for the first part of this uh, video then I've got signal generator attached to oscilloscope um, I'm using a very low frequency uh, audio frequency so I've not bothered with 50 ohm terminations here purists are going to tell me I should um, but for the purposes of what I want to try and explain here it doesn't matter um, and I'm using the Untech uh, generator and the Siglent scope but you could equally be using the little signal generator from the kit built lab and the DSO uh, uh, 138 oscilloscope uh, to do this uh, first part of this both of those would be more than adequate so I've got the signal generator producing a sine wave and where I'm going here is um, uh, certainly one comment that got made on a video recently uh, was along the lines of it would be good to know what else you can do with a signal generator other than look at pretty waveforms um, yeah I completely get that uh, it does sometimes feel that way although actually you can learn quite a bit from looking at pretty waveforms so this bit's definitely for beginners uh, and hopefully it'll be helpful so what have we got going on then well we've got a sine wave obviously the scope is producing uh, measurements of voltage on the y-axis and time on the x-axis as we've covered on many occasions um, but certainly one of the things you, you could learn from this, I don't propose to do this today, is you could look at uh, the difference between peak to peak and RMS voltage measurements on the Y scale. I'm going to just concentrate on the X scale um, for today. So um, one of the really nice things about a modern digital scope is uh, it'll make lots of measurements very easily and, and most of them by default tell you the frequency if they can work it out and it shouldn't really have much trouble working a frequency out here. So I've got it set to uh, a, a thousand hertz or one kilohertz and sure enough the scope reckons it's 999.994 hertz. Okay that's one kilohertz for the uh, level of accuracy I require in here. Um, but if you've got a scope that doesn't tell you that how can you work it out? Well um, many years ago uh, radios weren't uh, marked with frequency they were marked with wavelength so there is obviously a relationship between wavelength and frequency and if we were to measure the wavelength of a one kilohertz signal you might be slightly surprised to discover that it's 300 kilometers i didn't say that wrong it's 300 kilometers so it's a very long wavelength um, now scopes don't measure in meters usually they actually measure in time uh, so we can make measurements using time now I've moved the position of this trace so the center there uh, crosses at an exact point on the division and if we count along here one two three four five a complete cycle is five divisions and here up here it tells you what the uh, number of uh, microseconds what the, number, the time per division uh, in this case it's 200 microseconds so um, 200 uh, well 2 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds um, and that's the amount of time it takes the trace to cross one division so if we multiply that by the number of divisions um, we get uh, 0 0.001 seconds or 1 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds and that's uh, the wavelength measured in time that's usually referred to as the period often on equations it will be put down as t because it is a measurement of time um, and there's a relationship uh, a linear relationship between uh, the period and the frequency and that 
relationship is inverse. In other words, 1 over the period will equal the frequency. So if you are keen and you want to get a calculator and you want to divide uh, 1 divided by 0 0.001, which is the time, uh, you'll discover that gives you the answer 1000 on kilohertz. So if you're doing your novice radiometers course at the moment and you're trying to get your head around the relationship between um, frequency and wavelength that's maybe quite a, a nice little graphic way to explain it so frequency and wavelength inversely proportional and uh, nice to be able to see that uh, on a scope um, so yeah we've looked at a pretty waveform but hopefully it's allowed you to visualize uh, important uh, mathematic relationship that's going on okay this is a two channel generator and this is a, a four channel scope uh, so the next bit we couldn't do on the, the little DSO 138 because there's another thing we can do just with real simple sine waves is we can look at two of them so I've got an identical one kilohertz wave coming off channel 2 so I'll turn channel 2 on the scope on which is a purple trace and I don't know how well that's coming out in the camera but uh, there is um, you just about see they're overlapping but you can make just make out there there's some uh, you, you can see both traces but it's not terribly easy and one of the things you can do here is you can start looking at phase now I've done a video on phase I'll put a link up top to that and phase is a concept which um, is perhaps a bit confusing to beginners it's measured in degrees 360 degrees of phase at the moment these two channels are at zero degrees so they're they're they just coincide with each other so if I advance the phase um, on channel 2 the purple trace if I advance it by say 10 degrees uh, straight away you can see now both waves quite distinctly even um, on the camera here, that should show up so if I wind that straight up to 90 degrees of phase we've gone one quarter of the way if I now whiz along to 180 degrees the two waves are sort of cancelling out in a way they're they're uh, if you like equally spaced now and that's 180 degrees uh, car carrying on another 90 degrees up to 270 degrees gives us a trace that looks quite similar to the 90 degree trace uh, and in a way it is and if we continue up to 360 not surprisingly the two traces are now uh, back together so zero degrees and 360 degrees are the same in fact the signal generator has just gone back to zero so if you've got um, if you're trying to visualize how three phase electricity works can't do that on here because I've only got a two channel generator but uh, you've essentially got um, three phases that are uh, and there'll be a third phase going along there and that allows you to visualize um, how things work so that's phase and we've looked at um, the relationship between uh, frequency and wavelength so now I'm going to get reset to put something else and uh, then I'll come back okay so for sort of the second part of the video um, I'm going to try and uh, show you a practical use of a uh, signal generator which I know is something that uh, people have, uh, have requested on occasion so I've got uh, this device here which is um, an IF transformer from a, a 1940s radio now I've done a video on on these things in the past so uh, um, I'll put a link up top to, to the video about how these things work but here's the circuit diagram of, of what's inside there and essentially it's a, a transformer it also includes two um, capacitors across each coil so you've effectively got two parallel tuned circuits uh, joined together by um, uh, ferrite uh, inductors and it's adjustable with a, with a screw at the top and then the whole thing is in a metal can and in uh, a radio the metal can would be grounded to prevent uh, uh, stray interference between other components in the radio set I've not bothered with that today um, but before we go any further it's maybe just worth showing you the effect of touching the can now I can't get all this on um, the screen at the same time or I'm going to try to yeah okay let's put uh, the can on top there so you can see it. I'm just going to touch the can you can see the difference it makes to the amplitude of the wave and incidentally if I just bring that out we have got a sine wave here I'm just it's just easier to view this with a uh, the wave uh, waveform with a time base like that 
uh, but you can see the, the change in amplitude just touching the case and when I move the thing about um, there's, there's changes. So um, what I'm now going to do is set up the, uh, the generator um, and I'm going to set it, if I can do this, to about 340 kilohertz. So 340 kilohertz and let's say we'd got one of these and we were trying to find out uh, the, the frequency it was designed to work at. Now remember these things are usually designed to work at a few hundred kilohertz. They are adjustable and they would be influenced by other components around them so we wouldn't necessarily expect this to be exactly on uh, the IF frequency of the radio certainly just sitting here on the bench like this. So I've got the generator producing 340 kilohertz and I've just set the output voltage to give me a sensible display on the screen. So I'm now going to start increasing the frequency uh, 1 kilohertz at a time so that's 340, 341 and I'm going up there's 345, 347 348 and now it's starting to drop down again as we get to about if we get to 355 you can see it's almost back to where it started so we've clearly got a, a change in frequency response and even using a crude method like this we can see that clearly somewhere here there is a peak and it's probably somewhere about there so that's saying 348 um, kilohertz so if I move the um, pointer along so we can stop changing in kilohertz and start changing in 100 hertz we can probably find the point where it sort of peaks which would certainly here appear to be about I um, appreciate you probably can't see that too well on the camera it's about 347.7 kilohertz now when I touch the can you obviously get a, a change in shape there I'm touching the can now but if I just grab the adjuster to demonstrate this really is a variable inductor and I'm going to put my finger on the can so just make a mental note of where that waveform is right now now so I'm just going to screw the adjuster out and straight away you can see we've changed the res resonant frequency or we think we have we've certainly changed the amplitude but if I now uh, start uh, moving that about you can see we've got a different peak now at a different place but also we've got uh, a change in amplitude at that peak and that's because these two coils uh, work together uh, to produce the characteristic there we go I've got right up there off the screen take my finger off yet and um, we appear to have a peak there yeah about 347.7 something like that so let's now um, let's actually take some measurements and I'm not going to bore you by doing that but I've taken measurements from 340 up to 355 kilohertz on the original setting so let's pop those onto a graph uh, uh, like so this is an Excel graph and we can see a distinctive shape there that bell curve and that looks suspiciously like the um, response you might see in a filter incidentally modern radios software defined radios don't have um, things like uh, transformers like this but they do still quite like to display the filter shape um, using this kind of uh, this kind of bell curve display because it's descriptive of how the frequency response sits on a waveform so again handy stuff here if you're studying for your amateur radio exams uh, wherever you are in the world this this still applies so we've got this um, bell shape and if we ask excel to produce us a smooth curve um, it looks a little bit like that and you've got that classic IF response so hopefully what you've seen there is we've just taken a coil a few leads I've just got the um, output of the generator feeding one side of the transformer and I've got the other side sent straight to the um, channel of the scope and we've been able to ascertain a resonant frequency and we've also been able to um, uh, take a few measurements and plot what that means in terms of its um, frequency response. Now there are better ways to do this and um, we can make the sweep of the uh, scope match the sweep of um, uh, signal generator sweep sweeping the frequency on the generator sorry and, and we can tie that into the scope again I've done a video on that I'll put a link up top to it and we can actually um, visualize the actual shape of the filter on screen that's well beyond 
uh, the kind of thing I wanted to talk about today. But that's a practical use of a signal generator. Um, hopefully that's made a bit of sense. Okay, well we've looked at uh, um, some pretty sine waves and hopefully seen that there is some learning to be had there. And I would encourage you, if you've got the means to generate a signal and you've got an oscilloscope, get it connected up um, and have a play. Um, start understanding this. Uh, just because the, the scope gives you measurements very easily doesn't mean there isn't value in, in learning how you might do them uh, different ways. If you've only got a DSO-138 uh, scope or you've got an old analogue scope, uh, which you've seen me use on occasions, then you're going to have to make uh, some of those measurements manually. Um, but it's good learning to understand the relationship between frequency and wavelength. And I didn't make the point particularly in the video, but um, we now talk about frequency in Hertz, um, in uh, honour of, of Heinrich Hertz, um, uh, the scientist who did so much research in that area. But certainly um, 50, 60, 70 years ago, radios weren't marked up in Hertz, they were marked up in CPS or MCS, so that's um, cycles per second or megacycles per second and cycles per second um, is a very descriptive way of saying what um, a hertz is, it's a cycle per how many cycles per second. So hopefully it's made some sense, you've also seen a practical use, um, just playing with that IF transformer there, of how you can use your signal generator to, um, to work out uh, what kind of frequency a component is working on. If you've enjoyed the video, please click the thumbs up. If you haven't, you can click the thumbs down. It'd be great if you could subscribe, that helps the channel. If you're uh, on the lookout for a multimeter, uh, have a look at the links below. Um, I unashamedly say that the Kiwitz multimeters uh, are absolutely great for hobbyists. If you use the code below, you'll get a discount and that also helps the channel, which I would appreciate. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.